What is going on YouTube? Coming back today with my next college football preview and today I will be doing the Baylor Bears. An interesting situation right now to say the least in the midst of all the scandal and uh, firings and um, seems like stuff will still maybe be revealed and then even the talk of the death penalty at this point. Um, but anyway, put all that aside and uh, talk about you know what the team will be like if they do end up playing this year uh, with the team they have right now. So start with the three key players. First one is Seth Russell. And there will be a recurring theme here of there needing to be leadership on this team. And obviously he had a good season last year. I believe 29 touchdowns before he went down with it or with a neck injury uh, that uh, sidelined him for the rest of the season. Jared Stidham took over and did a bang-up job, but um, he ended up going down with injury too. But Seth Russell looks like he's got all the weapons in place to have another successful season. Uh, they've got multiple running backs uh, to be able to support a balanced offense once again. Um, you know, they got a, a decent amount of receivers back, uh, obviously the most notable one in Katie Cannon, but um, you know, Jay Lee's gone, Corey Coleman's gone. That's going to hurt, uh, no doubt about it. But um, they're going to need some new guys to step up as well. Um, most notably, um, Lynx Hawthorne, if he can step up and play uh, play at receiver. But then you also got Quan Jones and uh, probably most notably Ishmael, uh, Ishmael Zamora, um, probably the second biggest name now um, in that group of wide receivers. Now, obviously, like I said, the running back depth will have to kick in. But back to Seth Russell, like I said, he's got all the everything in place he needs to be a successful quarterback this year. Um, he just has to be that successful air raid quarterback he was last year. So my second key player is Trevon Blankard, linebacker for Baylor. They're going to need leadership on both sides of the ball. Actually, not linebacker, nose back. Um, but... The, they're going to need someone to step up, whether I think it, I think there's a multitude of guys that can do it, um, whether it be Trevon Blankard, Orion Stewart, Chance Wise. I think there's multiple guys along this defense, especially in the secondary, that can step up. You know, they lost a good amount on defense um, from the previous year, most notably Xavier Howard and Andrew Billings. So there's going to have to be a D tackle that steps up, mainly Andrew Billings. That's a big loss. And um, if they can find, you know, other positions on the field to be able to make up for that loss along the defensive line, then uh, that'll be just as good also. Obviously, you need a good defense and a uh, good conference offensively like the Big 12. So my third key player is Katie Cannon. I mentioned up earlier, uh, you, you, there's got to be re or leadership along the receiving core. Uh, there's very little um, returning experience. I think there's a lot of returning talent. Like I said, I see a guy like Ishmael Zamora being able to step up this year and you know take the take that spot that is left open by, you know, Jay Lee, um, Corey Coleman, some of the big names from last year. And mo more than anything for Katie Cannon, while he is going to get the bulk of attention, um, you, you saw that Corey Coleman got the bulk of attention last year on Baylor's offense, and he still put up like 20 touchdowns. So it'll, it'll have to be a big year for Katie Cannon. So move into my two X factors. And the first one is stability. This is just so obvious right now. Um, but they're, they're going to need some form of, uh, like I said, just consistency in some coach, in some players, before the season rolls around. Who knows how many players are going to transfer out. I know how many players loved Art Bryles there. Um, he recruited very individualized players and gave a lot of guys a chance that wouldn't have gotten that big of a chance anywhere else, and he brought that program to new heights. Now, they're going to lose a couple recruits, too. Again, that's just going to mix up, or mix things up even more. Um, Phil Bennett's going to have to be able to take control of that team. Uh, hopefully, Kendall Bry for Baylor's sake, hopefully Kendall Bryles sticks around. To be honest, I think Kendall Bryles sticking around is probably the glue that's going to be holding this all together, but who knows what's going to happen with him. Um, obviously, he's not as involved as his dad, but he still has the Bryles name on him, and that's something that's going to have to be big to pay attention to moving forward. I mentioned when I did my reaction to the Art Bryles firing that that was one of the biggest storylines I would be following is what happens to Kendall Bryles. So that leads into my next one, which is just leadership. 
they need someone on both sides of the ball to step up and say, you know what, guys, we still got the same team that we would have before. Um, we still got a ton of talent. We still are a team that can compete for a Big 12 title and still go out and do it. That's why I mentioned guys like Seth Russell, Trevon Blankert, and Katie Cannon because there are guys that are going to need to step up, but leadership and stability are things that are more pressing right now and things that if they're not there this year, then this team could fall apart in a hurry. Like you, like I said, you lost your head coach that took this program to new, like not only new heights, but unbelievable heights like no one ever expected. Baylor was kind of the trash in the Big 12 from – the late 90s all the way until our brows got hired in the late 2000s. So move on to my uh, schedule predictions, uh, what happens with the trap game, and I think the trap game will be at Texas. Um, they lost Texas last year. Obviously, that was pretty much because they had Lynx Hawthorne starting at quarterback. They did not even have a quarterback. Um, against a good Texas defense. People don't give Texas' defense enough credit. It is actually a very good defense, just Texas offense is just anemic sometimes. So I think the biggest thing with this game for Baylor is to be able to not get caught up in just how easy the schedule it is, or how easy the schedule is before that. From October 1st until October 28th, the only two teams they play are Iowa State and Kansas. And one of them they get at home. And then you got at Texas after that. And then after that you got TCU and then at Kansas or at uh, OU and then at home against Kansas State. Then at Texas Tech, then at West Virginia. That's how you round out the season. Really the biggest test before that is Oklahoma State at home. And like I said, it's easy to get caught looking ahead. It's easier to get miss, uh, probably complacent and probably will, will, will be the easiest game in that stretch. And it being the first one, they could get caught off guard a little bit. And like I said, who knows what Baylor team shows out this year. So my biggest game for them is obvious. And this is assuming all goes well for Baylor this year is expected. And that's at OU. Um, this game was expected to be all year, pretty much the battle for the big 12. Uh, Baylor, if they had stayed healthy, a quarterback would have been fighting OU for the, uh, for the Big 12 title, they did actually, I believe they beat OU. No, they didn't beat OU last year. What am I thinking? Um, came close to beating OU last year, but did get beat in, in Waco. And again, I, it's hard to see Baylor coming out with a victory at this point, but this is a Baylor team that has been able to beat OU in Norman in the past. So moving my record prediction, I think the thing that everyone's kind of waiting for here. And it's hard. It's hard to think of what's going to happen with Baylor this year, but you know, while I do think if they can't find some form of st stability and, you know, if, if the team starts to piece apart even more, then obviously the following years are going to be rough. But I think this year they'll still be able to be held together okay. Um, I, I see a 10-3 and three season this year. Um, I, I think this is a Baylor team that's going to lose two, two regular season games and maybe get a loss in a bowl game or three in the regular season and win in a bowl game. Um, I think that... As of right now, this conference is OU's for the taking um, just because of all the turmoil happening below them. And Baylor was obviously the biggest competitor, and this is obviously one of those catastrophic things that can happen to a program. So that'll pretty much do it. Like I said, interesting program to talk about, but I will be coming back later today with or with the uh, Clemson preview, the reigning runner-up. So should be interesting there, but that's pretty much it. See ya.